This roof has been extremely thought out for months at a time. Well, this, are you done? More days of solar shed day 39 another dirty 30 that's our sequel title for the day all right here's what's going on we got all of our decking put on late last night what we haven't put in are the vertical screws that will sort of run all the way down each rafter there's like 21 rafters Ashley's dad said to put them about eight inches apart. So that's roughly 400 screws is about what we've come up to. So you have a lot of marking to do, a lot of screwing to do. It's not super exciting, but it's gonna be really important to making sure that this thing is really held down and safe and secure. Making progress, slowly but surely. Got more screws to do, so let's get to it. Number 4,893. Hey, done! <laughs> okay, here's the deal. We went through the roof real fast. We're not done with it yet, but the first, last couple of days we went through really fast and we didn't have a lot of explanation because we were just busy building the thing. But yeah. also it was incredibly windy, so we couldn't at that point. Yeah, we've had a lot of comments, a lot of questions. Obviously, we haven't explained very well what we were doing. Uh -huh. So you guys get another question and answer session from Jonathan and Ashley. <laughs> and it's all about the roof. And actually, we're just going to talk about the first day of the roof. We're going to split this up into a few days so that we don't. The first day my dad came. Yes, day 34. Yes, right? let's take a look back at day 34, shall now, we? That was the day your dad... Wait, I was going to like... Oh. First order of business was to set up string lines parallel front and back uh -huh. and then parallel side to side so that we had a perfect square and we we're going to use all of those lines to take measurements off of when we started putting all the pieces of the roof in, right? Right. So it was a really important first step that we had no idea how to do. I thought it was going to take an entire day to do that, <laughs> but no, my dad knows exactly what he's doing uh -huh. and he brought this laser level. Well, yeah, you could see it during the day and it just, it points, uh, Five one, directions. One dot, five directions. And yeah. it's like perfectly squared. So that helped set all our lines incredibly quickly. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so we pounded stakes in and we ran lines and we wrote down all the measurements. Wrote down all the measurements. We did move things around a little bit just mm -hmm. to double check that everything was square. 
And I think we actually ended up having to move that later because we realized that the top of our building wasn't plumb. And so as you came up, part of the building went in a little and part of it came out. And so it, where it was parallel at the bottom, it was not parallel at the top. We'll get to that when we talk about it. That's MP. another day. But the first day, it was all we got all that set up uh -huh. and then we were able to use that string line to measure where to put our posts. Right. As you can remember, we have one post in the front corner in front of the circle and two posts on the back. To support the beams that are going to have to run across. Because for some reason, we decided to take a rectangle and a circle and offset them. And so we left these huge holes on each corner that yeah, needed made, to be supported. It made really cool like shade areas. It did. Yeah. I'm really loving the overhangs for yeah. sure. But yeah, that and this was one of the things where we were just kind of spinning out ourselves trying to figure out where does that how do you measure where that post goes and how do you get it in the right spot front and back and left and right and then make sure it's the right height and like we were stressing out uh -huh. a lot <laughs> a lot <laughs> but we got it figured out yeah got our holes dug we even poured concrete in the holes with um, a 12 inch sono tube form well yeah so we augured eight inches and then put no. the yeah, it's it was, more than eight inches. No, well, it was an eight inch diameter oh, hole. Yeah. And then we went Two down, down past the frost line, and then we took rebar and put it down in the middle so uh -huh. that the smaller hole intersected with the bigger hole with the sauna tube uh -huh. up outside of the dirt, and we put concrete in it. So it's real sturdy, and it's real solid. Yeah. We promise. And our six by six post support is anchored into that concrete. Well, yeah, it's like in the you concrete. Didn't, yeah, you just didn't say that. Sorry, I forgot about that yeah. part. Yeah. And then when we put our post in, that allows us to move them a little bit if we need to, um, make some adjustments. And if those posts were to ever go bad or rot out or something, we can just pop them off and put a new one in. I don't one at a, one I don't at think a, it's that One at a time, of course. <laughs> I don't think it's easy to just pop you just it off. pop it off and stick a new one in. Yeah. Easy. It's like Legos. So after that, uh, we set the front post first because we wanted to get the front beam up first. And we were hoping that if we set that early enough in the day, it would be dry enough by the end of the day to go ahead and set the post up there and start working on that front beam. So it did dry out and that meant that we could put that post there and then start to work on the front beam, which we were also very confused about because it's a four by six beam, but it needs to go almost 28 feet. Right. And they don't make those. They don't make 28 feet four by sixes, oddly enough. And we were, we just cannot like in our heads figure out the best way to sort of join these together. Well, in our research too, there's so many different ways that we could have done it. I didn't know which was the best so way to do it. So many ways, yeah. And so, we were overthinking it and yeah, your dad's like, listen guys, it's not that hard. You just make sure that where they butt up against each other, it's on a supported surface. Yeah, sitting on something supported. It's not in the middle of one of your windows. It's not in the open space, you know, over here where it, where it overhangs. Uh, and then take a really long two by four and we'll just screw it all together into one piece. And that you worked. screwed on both sides or just one side? Just one side. Just one side. Yeah. During that process, we also put in shims to make sure that there wasn't weight on the window frames. Right. right, but also just to level it up because one side of the building was like a half inch shorter than the other. Right, so we made sure that it's screwed into the bags and then into the wood so it's all like really solid and it's not going to go anywhere. Uh -huh. And that's what we did on the first day, right? Uh -huh. That was pretty much all we got done. Now obviously that was just day 34. We still have quite a few days worth of um, explanation explanation so just bear with us we're going to try to get to this one day at a time but just so you know the roof is very secure it's very solid we've done all that research we flew Ashley's dad in who has a lot of years so of experience in construction um, and so this roof is good it's not gonna fall over it's not gonna blow away we're not concerned about it one bit it's it's all tied down it's good we promise but we will be answering more questions about that tomorrow so we will see you then